Good afternoon, good morning. I don't know what the hell we are. Doesn't really matter, does it? So <laughs> welcome to the Fantasy Stat Podcast, episode number six with Jess Miller. Hiya. <laughs> so um, a lot of you will have followed Jess from her TikTok uh, sensational account with her with her husband, Mike. Um, I know Bella did. I was late to the party. I'm not a TikToker, but... <laughs> Um, and obviously a lot of you requested her because of her sensational transformation. So um, let's start at the beginning on this one. So where did you grow up and what will people not know about you from your TikTok? So I grew up in Hockley, which is in Essex. And I think I suppose what people wouldn't know about me is that my childhood wasn't like a simple childhood. My dad passed away when I was 10. So I think that's a, I don't really talk about it too much on social media, so... It was probably a bit of a traumatic childhood, not the norm. Um, so when people say not the norm, um, I'm always really uh, interested to know what, what what would you say was your depiction of a normal childhood based on obviously the, the, the trauma you went through? I'd say a normal childhood would be both parents still there and yeah, just a happy, normal. So it didn't feel life. happy or normal? No, it wasn't. It wasn't happy. No. no. And how do you think that that's that's affected you then going into you know present day? Because a lot of people tell me you know you are you either running away from something or running to something. So what do you feel like it was for you or both? I feel like that it made me realise how important life is, but also made me realise that I can't stop my life because of what happens to me as a child. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of people don't you? They they become bonded to the trauma and it becomes something that kind of like shackles them yeah and i really didn't want to be that person i feel like my sister held on to a lot of trauma and yeah i didn't want to be i wanted to life goes on doesn't it and my dad would want me to be happy were you were you close at that point me and my sister yeah um do you have brothers and more siblings than that just one sister, oh, just one sister yeah, yeah. i feel like that probably broke our relationship i'd say that sort of she was very close to my dad i was very close to my mum, and oh, okay, yeah. i think the fact that i in her eyes kept my mum, and she lost my dad it, right, was, it, okay. it really sort of drew the family apart i'd say and were you were you you say you were obviously closer to your mother at that point was yeah that, did you kind of become then the because a lot of siblings and, and, and children have told me that when a, a, a parent passes that their the other parent kind of looks for direction and kind of strength from from the children because obviously you know your your family is almost like a an organic ball of energy yeah. so when one leaves the others have to kind of take them back. so do you feel like your sister resented you a bit for that and how did that kind of make those you know years after yeah i think that the closeness between me and my mum but again because i wanted the closeness made my sister i don't know i suppose go a different way and not be as close with uh, she just didn't have the relationship that i had with my mum because oh, yeah. and i always feel that relationships are made on effort yeah of course yeah yeah and effort, i yeah. put a huge effort into my mum because she's the only one that we've got left so for me you've got to cherish that parent whereas i think that she maybe didn't do that and was that was that tough um on the family as a unit because obviously you know you you would hope in times like that everyone pulls together yeah i think that every i think that we needed to pull together at that point but it just at those ages they so were how old were you at the time when you were 10 10 saying? my sister was 11 okay so she's a little yeah. bit older than you and i feel like those years up to probably around about 14 were were okay but for when it got when it hit secondary school and it hit those teenage years that's where it really sort of took that turn and have you ever been close since we've had our moments yeah but she so i suppose a big part of how i feel about myself now is that she was very slim and tall and i was short and i suppose a bit chunky when i was younger and she would always say to me <laughs> like stop stretching my clothes if i borrowed her clothes she'd be like don't stretch my clothes like i was always pinpointed as the bigger sister right okay and i feel like that sort of threw our relationship apart as well where you know you had that sister rivalry but actually what she said to me always stuck with me so do you feel that that, that was 
in in some respects her kind of resenting you because relationship with your mum she's lost your dad so this was her you know a lot of parents tell me they see siblings punish each other yeah when, when there's kind of those roles yeah definitely and because obviously your body image was different you know i don't different people have different versions of chunky and and, and, and i was and, not you know you i think i was not chunky but obviously i was as a child yeah, maybe yeah. And did you have, were you active in sport at that point? Was she, or was she just naturally slim? Because Alana tells me, you know, her mum put her on the fat burners. You know, Nadine, you know, obviously had the the the, the separated, uh, she, she she left her and got kicked, I can't remember which, 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 which came first. So were you into a sport at that point? Or were you kind of, were you just going about your daily business, just happened to form into a chunkier model and she was... Yeah, I think I was really sporty at primary school. Okay. I suppose when my dad passed away, I just lost everything really and I danced um I carried on dancing so I always had that but when my sister started saying things like that to me that was the time I said to my mum I want to join the gym that was my oh wow okay yeah so it affected you that much yeah it affected me that much so I yeah, and then and anybody the else said anything to you at this point because what one thing we'll, we'll touch on later because you get a lot of it because you're 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 of your size your platform but so that was your kind of earliest kind of fit shaming yeah moment i would do because, yeah. but do you remember tybo oh is that billy blanks, <laughs> billy blanks. Billy i would do that i billy got blanks. my mum <laughs> to buy me the tape and i would the do it tape. in my bedroom it was a VHS daily. at that point probably <laughs> yeah i would do it in my room daily wow okay like i was like at that point she that was a, yeah i suppose the first fit shaming where i thought no like i'm not gonna I'm not going to be that person. And that was my start of my first feeling of like a drive towards wanting to prove someone wrong, I suppose. And was that kind of um, emphasis on body image something that you cared about? Because obviously, you know, you got the Billy Blanks uh, VHS probably back then. Yeah, the DVD, but the, yeah, yeah, Beta Max, probably the DVD, my, yeah, <laughs> yeah, God, shout out to DVD players. It's great when you had more than one. And then was that something you then kind of took on into your 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 late teens? I mean, what you say, you're like 14 here, and yeah, it late never secondary stopped. school my never stopped. Yeah, love for the gym never stopped until COVID. Um, so before we, we delve into COVID, because that's a that's a topic which ma makes or breaks most of the population. So when you then got into the gym, and and do you say you danced? Yeah. Um, was that something that you were then using as a, as a as an outlet for you know stress focus because obviously your father's passed that kind of parental loss doesn't doesn't heal in decades for most people did you find that was part of that which enabled you to focus then on yourself and you know you, you and your sister are a bit estranged you're obviously supportive to your mum yeah i find i found that being in the gym not only did it it helped i was very a, a very angry child once my dad died i was very angry yeah so i would literally wipe my whole bedroom out i would knock everything off. i would trash it right, in okay. anger yeah. and when i started at the gym i could feel that my anger wasn't there as much yeah so i knew that it was good like mentally as well for me to be in the gym and yeah. dance dancing for me was so what kind of dancing i done rock and roll dancing oh did you wow yeah. <laughs> okay yeah 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 and what, what what would that entail were you away a lot or was that something your mum pushed you into or again a lot of people tell me a lot of the activities they 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 formed in their use even if it was because obviously dancing you can dance in teams or you can you know do solo jazz tap etc was this something you did for a, a release of, as well as the gym something that meant a lot to you yeah so my mum started dancing in her 30s and then she just took us when we was young okay and i just loved it i just found it i would I, not yeah. bet you'd have said that for no. dance yeah most people say tap jazz I know. street you know i was into elvis presley yeah i was gonna say yeah the proper rock and roll era <laughs> yeah uh, and, and was that because obviously people comment on your legs do you feel like that's the first part of your early development because obviously dancers have always great legs great calves yeah i think that that was definitely what I suppose shapes my body yeah. like dancing and a ballroom danced as well from a young oh, okay. age so and did you lose the the i call it for argument say puppy fat was that did you kind of shape up and what was your relationship with your sister like after that or because obviously some people tell me you know uh, my backstory my brother was a bodybuilder my sister's boyfriend is a was a famous bodybuilder and i was this you know six three nine stone runt and my sister and brother would say oh you'll never have big arms but yeah so that was kind of like people say you know my my, my reverse fit shaming was i was told i would always be a runt yeah so was that did that did that 
was something your sister said was something that drove you to it or at that point did you kind of found your identity which was i love the gym i love to dance this is something i can focus on yeah i think i really found confidence at that point yeah and at that point when i found confidence i found at school then i got a bit targeted so how was school for you because what i'm trying to drive at is a lot of people don't realize that and i found with 100 percent of successful people and whatever form of industry and whatever brand of success they have there's a backstory and yeah. something driving them or, or at least something which sits there that they don't realize is the basis for what drives them so what was school like for you from kind of that age of 10 when your dad passed and then i think that i just wasn't really that interested in school yeah. at all ever and my motto in my brain was i'm gonna marry a rich man and I won't have to do anything. Shout out to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a bad way of thinking. <laughs> no, I guess you were you were kind of primed for 2024 when it seems yeah. everybody finds a rich man. Um, and and was I that, felt like I shouldn't have to work hard. Like I'll just find a rich man, and you know that'd be fine. And did that literally? Because I do speak to people that say I genuinely did not try in school. I genuinely didn't care what job I had because I was sure I would find X Y Z guy, or I would look actively for so you, you know you, you got yourself in shape you're dancing was school a place that you enjoyed being socially because i speak to a lot of people who are who are self-made like like you are and whether they find it through life's path or whether they had you know i'm going to be a, a a car maker you know anything painter decorator they said in school we kind of knew we weren't destined school but we we enjoyed the social side was it something that you didn't necessarily hate to go to or I, to be honest, I lived for the Friday night going rock and roll dancing. Right, okay. And did anyone in the school know you did this? Was it kind of like yeah. a secret? Yeah, no, yeah. I'd always tell people. Oh, My mum actually shop? worked at the school and she'd oh, wear... Oh, okay. Uh, she, she actually, she's very into rock and roll, so she'd wear rock and roll clothes. Like, oh, she'd like wear the, the tight, gear. Yeah, yeah, and the big skirts. Um, and but I think that really... Shout out to mum. <laughs> I think that right, really made me not care what people think because i used to see my mum do it and people would say to me, oh, why, why is your mum wearing them shoes? And I'd think, well, because she wants to. But like she'd wear like little pixie shoes or something a bit odd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really got used to, I suppose, her being a bit different. And that was a real motivator in my life that you can just be what you want and not care what people think. Okay, without, without I could jump ahead so far now. So <laughs> your mum is, you know, this rock and roll dancer. She's in school. She's wearing what she wants. You're dancing on the Friday. Did anyone say to you, like, you know, because I actually don't know anybody in my school years who did that. No. I know a few who did ballet and even that was a bit like mm, you know if you do even though as a pro basketball player we were told to do ballet for our coordination so you know it works out for a lot of people did you find that being a little bit different like that was the start of you enabling your own inner self-confidence yeah definitely i think that was like a huge like it's always been like a massive part of me and i've never really cared that that is part of me yeah. and it, even though it is a bit odd I just think it's... But I guess if, if you're a kid, there's probably nothing better you can do than do sport or dance. Yeah. Gymnast I think everyone says for a little girl, they want you to dance or to do gymnastics. There's, you know... Or, yeah. And did you find then that, that you accepted yourself? Uh, what I love to find out about people is, is especially people who will go on to later in your industries, is when did you first realise that people's opinions don't ultimately matter? And did your mum, your mum obviously was a very strong character to go into school because I know people who are my age now who have extracurricular activities and not even anything interesting per se, who won't let it necessarily be seen, train spotting, you know, stamp collecting. You know, I told someone I listened to ASMR and they were like, Jesus, what the hell? You know, <laughs> it, but, but, so that, that kind of inner self-confidence, when did that then start to kind of more come out? I would say around about year nine, so right, okay. 14 years old, I'd say. Oh, young, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's when I started feeling, started to feel confident. I was in the gym, I was... And did your mum kind of influence that? Did she tell you, you know, actively, just be yourself, dress yourself, you know, don't care what people my think? My mum's always been, like, my biggest hype fan. Like, oh, really? She, yeah, okay, wow. I, she's always just, I don't know, made me feel like I'm... <laughs> the best person so they, so they should so all parents should do <laughs> yeah so your mum then is obviously your father's past your mum is this pivotal kind of you know role model for you and then when you left school i don't know what way did you leave school was it early late uh left school at 16 right 
and what was the next stage i done beauty so i went and okay. went to college to do all my beauty stuff and i really found myself there to be honest that's where i fell felt like i was meant to be okay and, and what, what did that entail what was like a uh what were the priorities for jess at that point what did you want to be or was it kind of you know you're in beauty mum supports you fully which you know a lot of people tell me they never had so that's one thing we'll touch upon later and then was that your goal then beauty yeah i wanted to have my own salon okay. and wanted to be my own boss and i think that's where i really sort of started thinking i don't really want to answer to anyone else i yeah. want to do me and and was your mum supportive of that too was it you know yeah she was she's always been hugely supportive yeah oh, okay and then what were the steps after that, after college, you know? So then I came out of college and I don't know what happened, but I went in to be a dental nurse. Okay, yeah. yeah so I yeah. found a job as a dental nurse because it was really difficult to get into a salon. Like no one would take on young people who had just come out of college. So I was like, well, I need money. I'm going to... So then I went into... Yeah, dentistry. I guess you're either a Saturday girl, aren't or you? Or, you or, yeah. No, I never wanted to work on a Saturday. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, yeah, it is, you know, I've had salons and that, that's what you looked for, the skivvies. Yeah. Um, so you went into being a dentist. How long did that last? And was that, did you feel like that was you then? Could you see a path or? Mm, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Right, okay. I still wanted to see the beauty. Okay, yeah, I still yeah. felt like that was my, my calling. And then I met my ex husband as he was um and it, my life just took a spiral at that point to be honest okay so before we go into that so did you dance still at this point were you were you still into the gym yep still dance still into the gym like hugely into the gym at that point okay, yeah. like my love for the gym just sort of grew mm -hmm. i think and same with dancing i'd say it all sort of took a tumble when i met my ex and how old were you when you met the ex 18 18 okay so you got married quite soon after i got married at 21 okay and what were the how long if we just kind of segment into like how long did it last and then you know what was your what, what was jess like during that period so it lasted three years okay on and off um so when i first met him i just completely changed as a person i lost everything about me and was that the dancing the gym the confidence yeah relationships absolutely everything i lost all my friends i stopped going to the gym and i stopped dancing and was that his influence yeah he just wanted me all to himself was he older five years older than me yeah, right and how was that in terms of did that make you feel because a lot of people tell me when they're very very almost a mirror image of, of Nadine and, and, and Alana's story that when they meet this person it's where you either find where you shouldn't be or you know I think that when I first met him he had his own house I moved in literally within a week wow okay yeah so he was like come and live with Lots me of love yeah like so I was very wrapped up in this craziness that i'd never been in before first love or what you would no, you describe second, as second okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah second love and i put on weight very quickly and then got told that i was fat all oh, right Classic so, narcissist move. yeah i just it, he really liked me at the beginning and then slowly just stopped it's the most bizarre i talk to dr emily about this all the time and when mates will ask me it sounds like i'm trying to be dr phil here when mates will say to me what's going wrong with my relationship i'll say you've created the evil you're now trying to avoid yeah you, know, you meet the girl she goes to the gym she looks great people cat call her she got the confidence you're insecure because of that yeah which would did attract you it's like a paradoxical what attracts you then causes you mayhem and then you break them down to a point where you now don't find them attractive or you don't respect them they don't get the cat corn they don't look great and then you end up destroying them it, it's a it's a really strange narcissistic toxic relationship yeah and so you have this you've lost the dancing you put the weight back on how did you feel about jess then it's a very insecure yeah really really insecure. And have you ever felt that before no that no. was the first time i really felt really insecure and angry again yeah 
I think that's like probably the biggest thing that my childhood set back yeah. and that anger that I felt as a child. It come back. Like, I suppose loss of control. Mm -hmm. I think my anger comes from loss of control yeah. and I had lost control in that because I relationship suppose as well. you've been so strong for your mum and your sister through, you got through school. Not a lot of people are, are self-aware and they like their own company. They like the way they look. They're strong enough to rock that. Yeah. And then you found this guy who's like broken this down. What was your perception of him as a man? And obviously I say to everyone, feel free not to answer. Um, you don't have a father figure. So I'm assuming a lot of this guy's actions, you don't have a guy to go home to and go, you know, dad, is this normal? Yeah. I feel like I didn't have someone to rescue me. I yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no. And then, and, and from Jung to Freud to Jordan Peterson to everyone in between will say, and I, I noticed this and I say it without causing offence to anyone I've ever dated, but you can spot who has a strong father and who doesn't. Oh, 100%. And, and I've said that to people and it's almost, people say, oh, daddy issues and daddy complex. The reason it's written into the, uh, and embedded in deep psychology is because it's true. Yeah. Um, whereas when I had, I remember going on a date with a girl from Lebanon and I'd said something to her in passing and she messaged me later and said, my dad said you shouldn't. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and she's like, I went and told my dad what he said. And it, it, I think it was something about, um, it was about label conservatives or something. He was like, you're this, 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 and this. So I don't want to, I don't want a second date. And I was like, Jesus, I'm not like your dad isn't you. And she was like, no, no, no. I've asked my dad what I should think of men. Yeah. Cause I'm 18 and you're, so did you, you feel like you were looking for, not necessarily you were looking for the father figure in the, ex-husband or the husband at the time but you didn't have anyone to then kind of draw energy upon that this wasn't something you should stay in yeah i think like he was older it seemed like oh you're going to be more mature you're going to be all those things that i suppose that i was looking for this yeah of course yeah, man yeah, yeah. who was gonna i don't have to work make you safe yeah take care of yeah, yeah the, the whole thing because obviously girls look to their father for financial help advice it, it, it's no it's no shock that you would have not had the the natural instincts because you don't have the father to lay that down. Yeah, and my mum, like, I never lied to my mum ever. Yeah. And I started lying okay. to her because he would convince me to lie to her. And she would always say that once the relationship ended, she said, I never, like, I always believed you because you always told me the truth. So, so how did that make you feel? Because I guess what you're saying is you're you're eroding the great parts that Jess grew up with from one man. Yeah. It it felt horrible at the time. Yeah. And I think that that's, again, what just made my self-esteem just go even more down. And how did you speak to yourself back then? Because one thing I champion is how people talk to themselves. And I think sometimes people hold trauma a lot closer than they think, even though they don't think, by the way, they hold it. You know, a lot of people blame themselves for being coerced when they can't really, because I always say this, well, you don't know, you don't know. And if yeah. you don't know, like for instance, if you don't have a strong mum, you probably don't know how women act. And you yeah. think you do, but you can't really pick that up. We all grow up with our parents and you, you feel what your parents do. People say, you know, more is caught than taught. And I think when I was 18, and I realized that half the things I said, I'd heard my dad say, I didn't learn like a book, it just came in one ear out the other one, then I regurgitated it. So do you yeah. feel that the relationship with your mother suffered as well because of this? Or was she kind of like, come she back to She wouldn't Jess? let it suffer. Oh, that's great. I think that's the good thing. That one thing that I never lost within that relationship was the relationship I had with my mum. So, because I know that a lot of people will get rid of their families, like through a bad relationship. And did he try and kind of keep you oh, set, he, like a separate tried, island from your mum? Yeah, but yeah. No. that was one thing that wouldn't, it, yeah, it didn't work. And was she, how was she, because some parents, even the best ones can be, can make lessons hard when we, when we exit a relationship. Was she kind of loving and, or was she a bit like, well, you need to know this for the next time. And it's hard with her because I feel like she's a very similar character to me. Yeah, no, no, we, we mirror our parents <laughs> a lot. And I feel like she's very forgiving and sometimes too nice. Okay. And I feel like, she was so fooled by him as well that she still to this day would say, oh, but he was nice sometimes. So his character to you, is it something that you, you know, it, even though there's obviously a gap between Mike and him and, and, and we'll go through that in a minute. 
is is that a character you then knew to avoid is that something which because obviously a lot of people say when they exit relationship wow i didn't see the red flag because i was never used to that kind of a red flag i don't know what love bombing is uh you know when people start telling people not to speak to their family some people organically go well you might be right my family not realizing that even if that were true you should never stop speaking to your family you yeah. know they're things you never cut off so your mum's kind of a forgive and forget person what age were you when you kind of started to come out of this and realized that you know you needed to get the old Jess back so when the relationship ended I spoke to the Dove Project okay yeah and they said to me they pretty much said to me on the phone you're either going to go into a relationship that's exactly the same most women do yep or you'll be one that doesn't and that was stuck in my head and I knew at that point I was going to be the one that doesn't go well, into that. For those who don't know, in modern psychology, most people don't realise the extent to which a relationship was suffering so they then jo try and jump into the next one to rekindle the feelings they found to stop the pain of the one they've just exited. Yeah, and it's also really difficult to go into a relationship, a loving relationship, and feel like you deserve that love. Of course, yeah. Because you, you, most people feel that they were lovable anyway, and if someone were to do those things to someone who thought they were lovable, then maybe they weren't lovable. Yeah, and also I came out with a, a child. I came out with a two-year-old, and I knew that I did not want her to be around anything that was bad in her life. So I was, I was very cautious about who the next person I met. Oh, so you had a child at that point? I, yeah. Oh, right, okay. So how old yeah. were you when you came out, and so your, your daughter was two at the time? She was two when She's I two. came out of that relationship. And how old were you? 23. Was I 23 when I... Yeah, 23. 23. And so what was life like after that in terms of mentally, job, career? Kind of where do you think you were going? So once I came out of that relationship, I the first thing I'd done was went back to the gym. Right, yeah. So got myself back in the gym and Mike was working at the gym. <laughs> Shout out Mike. <laughs> Yeah, so he got a job at the. He literally just got a job at the gym, and that was us, really, wasn't it? So you met at the gym at that point, and um, how did that kind of? Uh, so how old were you at that point? Say twenty. Twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. So what were the next few years like for Jess and Mike? Um, I, I say hard at the beginning because I was a very hard. <laughs> I was very hard work, wasn't I? We'll call you patient, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I was very hard work and it took me a lot to obviously to trust again and and feel I deserve to be loved because yeah. Mike's really loving, really loving. So I found that really, I suppose, traumatic. Yeah, and, and do you know what? Shout out to Mike because um, a lot of men will say to me, and, and I use these phrases just because it's easier for the, the audience to, to empathise with. They say, oh, I've met someone who's hurt or damaged. Um, and a lot of the media these days will tell you that you know being really kind sometimes doesn't work but this just proves that you know loving through trauma works and i've yeah. always said that i've always said that you know i get a lot of modern wisdom says you know you have to let people heal on their own but i do believe you can help someone love themselves because you hear people say you know you shouldn't get another relationship until you love yourself anyway i believe you can heal people yeah. by helping people so how old was your little girl at this point she was two and a bit she was two and and how quickly did you kind of did this relationship once you'd realized that mike was one of the good ones where did you kind of go from there how old were you so i was we moved in quite quickly together so i had to i, I went back to live with my mum with okay, a child yeah. and i had to i didn't want to be at home anymore because i'd yeah. not lived at home for three years and i it, it was hard work being yeah of course yeah, yeah, yeah. so i independence is tough to then uh yeah. To someone else, yeah so i went on benefits moved out got a flat and then mike pretty much moved in at that point because he was closer to his work living with me so then uh, what was your work then did you did you stay on benefits or was there kind of like a, a so once i met mike i got a job at beauty salon okay so you went into beauty then went finally into beauty, yeah. yeah and um i was really lucky because he looked after Chloe. Wow, like on the days talent. yeah he just was there straight away to i said i want a job or i don't want to be on benefits and he just took on that role straight away and allowed me to yeah work and and 
didn't know about else this but for the people out there who find it hard to trust again you obviously you've got this guy that will do what 90 times everybody wouldn't do is just embrace the situation he was in and you know big white shoulders how did it feel to trust again was there because a lot of people say to me i can't trust i'm like you'll know when you can yeah i feel like when i came out of the relationship i remember laying in bed and thinking what you what his because he cheated on me what he's ruined is i'm never going to be able to trust anyone again and I, I, I in my head i was thinking i'm never going to be able to trust anyone again and then i got to a point where i was like no like, i'm not going to let you ruin me yeah so I'm going to trust again. And I, it was just, I suppose it's self-work and just believing in yourself and that, no, I'm not going to let this person ruin me. I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust again. I'm just going to pick the right person. And do you think the, I always ask this, not that I'm, you know, not I think gym and fitness cures at all, but, you know, one thing you did say, I went straight back to the gym. Do you think the fact that Mike was in the gym, you were in the gym, did that help with your emotional control, you know, dopamine, serotonin, self-worth? Because I've always said to people, if you're, not that I've never had depression or anxiety, so one thing I'm careful to do is not try and tell people how they feel, but I've said to people, lying in bed and wallowing in the, the self-pity you have is not going to be the way you'll ever regain enough strength to trust and love again, that you have to do some internal internal work. Uh, so, you know, you're doing this internal work. You've met Mike, you've moved in. What were the next few years like? They were hard work because, because I... I'd been used to having a relationship where I didn't have to work. Yep. But this time round, I was like, I don't want to rely on a man. Yeah, relinquish like, I, that I control. I need my own independence. And I was lucky that I was with someone who wanted me to have that independence as well, where I'd been so restricted from having any independence in my last relationship. So in that last relationship, I'd done a semi-permanent makeup course. Mm -hmm. So I said to Mike, I'm going to, I'm just going to do some pet makeup again. I'm just going to try. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had oh, to really? put myself through. I remember my first ever client, I remember putting a Facebook post up and saying, oh, I'm going to do some pet makeup. I remember that first client come in and I remember sitting in the car, Mike dropped me off at my mum's house because I was doing it at her house. And I sat in the car and I could have cried because oh, I just really? felt so nervous about tattooing someone's face. But I thought in my head, I've I got. Hope it went right. I, <laughs> I've got to do it because I've got to earn money. I've yeah, got, yeah. I've got to push myself, and I, I think that's the first time I've ever pushed myself really out of my comfort zone to and try and succeed. Did you feel you were only nervous because of the falls you'd taken? Was Jess a nervous person before? Because one thing a lot of people ask me when I put the questions on the um, the podcast page is obviously and. and, and for those who don't know you will only find you through the start of this i don't want to give anything away but we all was that self-assurance something that you'd that jess had built up since her father passing the dancing the school and then you had to refine this yeah definitely would I, old jess before the marriage have sat in the car and been nervous to go and do the, the no, no she would no, yeah, not at all yeah. yeah i would have been i've done all the beauty stuff and we had clients come in with all beauty treatments when i was at college mm -hmm. And I was confident yeah. and it was just, I, I became a people pleaser when I was in that abusive relationship. So when I came out of it, all I wanted to do was please people. Which, you know, I, I, I say this to a lot of people when they say about people pleasing, it's not a bad thing to be nice to people unless it's at your own detriment. Yeah. You know, I don't think there's any problem. I think, you know, my mum, who's one of the kindest people I know, is a people pleaser. But I wouldn't say she does it in a in a sense that she pleases the people that take advantage. Yeah. And I think a lot of people put a negative connotation on people pleasers. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean you have to be someone who gets walked over. It can sometimes mean you just put yourself second. Yeah. So, you know, you've, you've, you, you sat in the car, you're nervous. What made you push on where a lot of people who followed this and followed Nadine and followed Lana they say oh, I can't get moving again it was just money and my financial situation mm -hmm. I just thought and one thing my ex told me was I'm never going to be successful without him and that was the biggest driver in my brain I thought the only way I'm going to be successful is to get out of my comfort zone Yeah. so when anyone one thing with me is that when anyone tells me I can't I will do it bigger and better than than they even think they're going to get. It, it seems to be the most common denominator. Stephen Bartlett spoke about it. I watched actually Tony Robbins speaking about it this morning. Every single person who quote unquote is successful in what they do have 
a life now shrouded in a past of self-doubt and people telling them you can't, you won't, you shouldn't. Um, because I believe that pain and self-doubt is the greatest driver. Yeah. You know, Elon Musk says, you know, the, the, the thinking that your lofty goals are too lofty are the things which scared him into being great. And I've said to people, you know, you need to work with the pain and the, the doubt and the mistrust from people and use that as your driver. So you've had that now. Yeah. What's the next step? Where did you start to become someone that you probably trusted again, liked again? And obviously I know Mike has been this kind of pivotal person with your daughter and you, but obviously your journey is yours. I think again, when I met Mike, he just loved me for every everything that i was no yeah. makeup j every inch of me and it, i remember thinking being in a loving relationship really is like a huge part of self-confidence so because some do i see it women say oh i met a nice guy and he was too nice you're now whether that rings true or not in, in its entirety, you're saying that knowing that this was love in its most, you know, gentle, kind, reciprocal way, why do you think some people fight against that? What it, what what made you go, no, I this is this is something great? I feel like that people don't think they should have that love. That's why they fight against it. They don't think they deserve it. Because right. there's never anything like when people say, Oh, he's too nice I just don't. Yeah, I've never understood that. I don't. That, that's just crazy in my yeah. brain. Like that. Why would anyone want to be treated badly at all? Yeah, it's a bizarre concept. And my friends, I talk about all the time when girls go, "Oh, I like to keep him on his toes." I'm like, I don't get why any man. It's like when you see the the, and it's normally Americans. Shout out to my American clients, I love you. But it <laughs> tends to be where you see them go. Well, I'm this independent queen. If a guy doesn't do this, I'm like, I'd run for the hills. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I want someone when I come home that it's calm and neutral and brings me down. Yeah. I don't want to wonder if you wondered if I should get the shopping or you because you're independent. It's fucking wild. It's the calmest life I've ever had. Yeah. Like being in this relationship. But then that strives me to make these, I suppose, more crazy decisions. <laughs> okay, so because because I think that's this that life and your fitness life are going to be most of the bones of this. Let's go now without jumping over anything you think is 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 important for the listeners. So you found this stability. How old are you now, and when did you start to think there's more we could be doing? When did life change? So we both went, so I done. I was doing the same kind of makeup. Mike ended up doing, having an events company. Oh well. And we were just so busy. Like we was, we was getting good money, but I was working on a Saturday. Mike was working at Saturday evenings and it was, because he was doing wedding events, it was very like weekend based for him. Yeah. And we had just no, time really mm -hmm. together like, and it was just hectic and also we've all we've always had really good sex but we i don't know, I suppose things were going like i don't know I don't, I don't like when things just sort of smooth yeah of course yeah like just get a bit dull and we were just constantly thinking what a side hustle could we do just to get a bit more money and stop maybe mike from having to work so hard at the weekends because he'd yeah, just go out with his friends as well yeah, of course, yeah. and the kids were suffering through it as well because it was so you've a got, you got another child at this point yeah so me and mike ended up having a child and when was that into the to the relationship that was 2014 Two. so i was pregnant quite quickly wasn't i seven months seven months into that relationship but i sort of knew i just knew I just, yeah 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 <laughs> i knew i wanted a child i knew i wanted them to not have a huge age gap mm -hmm. and i was like right okay yeah 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 <laughs> get going and how did that change? Did that change the dynamic, or or did that now solidify the fact that this is the life you wanted? You know, go full steam into. Again, like I remember being really panicky over having a child because I pretty much raised Chloe on my own, got up night feeds, yeah. done everything, and just even when I was pregnant, he would just say like how he loves the way I look. I, it just it was just so different to the the pregnancy I'd had before, and then once we had the Stanley. Yeah, he was. You were just such. He was such a good dad. Just night feeds, doing it all, helping. I carried on working. I couldn't. I didn't stop. I okay. pretty much 
um, carried on working weekends because I'd only gone self-employed yep. like quite recently, so I didn't get any maternity, yeah, so I had to carry yet. on. I didn't want to lose my clients mm-hmm. either, and he was just there at the weekends helping, and yeah, it was just it was just easy and nice and just yeah, just. So, you know, you've got this, you know, really tranquil life. You mm. just mentioned, you know, you've got this great sex life. Um, for those who don't know, you've got a gigantic TikTok channel. Yeah. I don't know, 1.5, 1.6 million yeah. <laughs> followers. In, in, insane. Kudos to building anything that big. So when did the Jess and Mike start? Well, or, or not so much when, how did it start? Because we've just touched upon the fact that, and the reason I, I like to backtrack, because a lot of this is about mindset, confidence, um so you know you've recovered from all these drops you've got this life back another child you're trusting again at what point do you start then to kind of really like a phoenix rise from the flames you know you're this girl that now again has confidence in herself has confidence in her her her, her partner um when did it become evident that you really all wanted to do more now and, and because obviously you've got to trust your partner to do anything that we're going to talk about now when did the Jess and Mike show start and how? So I had a client come in um, who I'd done her eyebrows and she was a webcam girl. And I remember just obviously we'd have- adult, adult work stage. Adult, yeah, yeah, webcam. And that was bigger than people. I, mean, I, I must have had a thousand clients over the years. Yeah. And it was something that when I would tell people aside, I'd say, oh, I've got these clients and um, I used to own a gym and they'd come into the gym and people would say, why are these girls not working? I'd say, oh, they have this webcam thing and people would say, what do you mean webcam? And I think they thought it was like the first kind of Zoom, like what you talk about. No, no, it's, it's these posturing sites where, you know, I think Andrew Tate made his money. Yeah. So did was that how it started? Was it something that you could, because obviously people do it from like nine o'clock at night to one in the morning. Yeah. So she was telling me all about it and I was just so intrigued. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just was like. Have you always been quite an intrigued person? I've always been a very yeah. sexual person, yeah, right. I think. And my mum is very sec- like open sexually as well. Yeah. So we've always had, great conversation with my mum so it's never, I've never yeah. been sort of repressed scared like that. Yeah, of, of yeah anything I mean, she kind of tactile because they say a lot of this comes from you know not in a, a Freudian sense either when parents are hugging and kissing you find that side's expression and people then tend to be more expressionate with their partners because you find that people from the no I, I was about to be cancelled then <laughs> I was literally about, I'll tell you after, <laughs> that was just about, that's a large demographic I was about to mention. So you find people from homes where, honestly, that was that was dangerous. You find people from homes where the parents have a view on physicality, nakedness, porn, um, even public shows of affection. They then tend to, to either rebel and go into the industries which were mentioned. But your mum was obviously very open. So in that sense, that drove you to kind of being then more open to the idea of adult works, etc. Yeah, I, I forgot to say. So when I was like around about seventeen, I wanted to be a page free girl. Oh yeah, shout out to. So how old are you now? Uh, Thirty-five. So you were young, so it'll be eight, I'd have been, yeah, so that would have been, so you would have been in the birth of Zoo Magazine. And yes, I loved Zoo like Magazine. That. Yeah, I yeah, Lucy Pindham, so much. <laughs> oh, did Magazine. you? Wow, shut up. <laughs> um, but that, I told my mum, I was like, mum, I want to be a page free girl. And I remember going off to have my pictures taken. And she well, it was, it was, people know, in the 90s, it was glamorous. Yeah. I coached so many girls from Zoo and Nuts, and they used to, and you were like a little bit of a, like almost like a wag type star, you know, yeah. the Lucy Pinders and Michelle Marshes, you know, you were somebody that, that it, and I do, I think that was the start of where being sexual was accepted more. And obviously, you know, shout out to everyone from many religious sects where this isn't applicable. Um, but that was a very British thing. Yeah. And, 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 and I remember my parents are both very, very open, very liberal people. Um, and I remember, um, I see in the first page three, and you would see, but it would be, you'd see big boobs and bras on the front of the paper. Yeah. And in Britain, that was natural. And I remember having friends come over from other countries going, wow, that's like a top <laughs> shelf thing. I'm like, well, there's no nipple. They're like, yeah, but still. So, so you've grown up in that era. Yeah. You wanted to be page three. Did, was that a driver then when this client says, well, I do this? Was that suddenly thought we could do that? Yeah. Or I feel I like could I'd, do this? I sort of had that moment of wanting to be page three girl and that sort of quickly fizzled out by yeah. my met my ex. So I think that once my confidence came back, I, I still had that dream. Yeah, like, I still had yeah. that, like, that, 
I just I, I was obsessed with Kate Pryor, Georgia, Kate Price. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Like, I loved yeah. all of that. But it was glamorous when I was back then, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And for all the footballers that were with page three girls, yeah. actors, it wasn't it wasn't looked down on at that point. Yeah. So when Barbara she was Windsor. telling me about this, I went into to Mike and I was like, Do you reckon we could do it together? Like there's gotta be something to do with couples. I, can't, I didn't really just want to do it on my own. Right, okay. Like I wanted us to we've done everything together and I just wanted yeah, us yeah. to carry on. carry on doing it together. I so didn't did want, they I didn't I don't know enough about it then, I didn't ask so was there like a couple's aspect to the webcamming? So we researched, we started researching webcamming and we found a site called Chatterbait. Right. And we was like look, researching through it and found a couples page and there wasn't that many couples on there. So where you'd have pages and pages of girls online, the couple section, there was only two pages. Jeez. I'm so genius. we thought... And what was it called? Chatterbait. Chatterbait, right. So we thought... You, you was a bit sceptical on it, weren't you? He was like, we're not going to make that much money. And I was like, we've got to try. Let's just give it a go. Like, we'll do a week. Like, let's just give it a go. There's no, no point in, in not. I'm always probably the person. He's all very sceptical. I'm more of a fuck it. Oh, so in your dynamic, is, is, there, is there this kind of, are you the more glass half full he's a bit more well let's see it filling up before i say what it like, is i'm doing like when i put it in my brain i'm doing it and i'm trying to convince him okay, that we're doing okay. <laughs> brave man brave man so yeah we and got, how did it go it we smashed it literally right. first week like everyone was american and we oh, were okay, english right, so yeah, people yeah. found it fascinating they were like oh my god an english couple and did you so sorry some of these things even though i've coached a lot of people from various industries i've never been in them or on them to know so did you speak did could they hear you or did, did yeah they can British hear us flag? so oh, we, wow, would, okay. we got our I never knew that side. little laptop i thought it was just typing little webcam thing and they could they could hear us didn't they yeah on, yeah they can hear us so oh, wow. we would talk and they would we made a real rookie mistake at the beginning so you can go to a private people can ask for a private show yeah and they'd sort of tell you, it's pretty much them telling you what to do. Right, okay. So they took us into a private show and we thought we set a budget. And, but he managed to get the whole show for free. Oh, no. <laughs> so. Well, practice makes perfect. Hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, we made someone's day. Let's, let's take the positives from, from that. So that was a rookie mistake at the beginning. But we, we smashed it for, an, for a week. Right. And the first week that you go on the site, they will put you at the top of the page. Okay, so yeah. So we thought more if we smash yeah. this week and get as many people following us as possible, yep. then it's going to be good for that the next weeks. Yep. And we've done that for six months. Was it six months? We was absolutely shattered. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, was yeah, on yeah. it every single night. Yeah. <laughs> every single night till like two in the morning. Like it was, it was a hard grind. School run was rough. <laughs> yeah. Been up late. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone on Chatterbait said to us you should just join only fans also you know um what what kind of what are the because i don't think some people realize how early only fans was in yeah. terms of i think someone said i saw a, a really big podcast about it saying oh it's a couple of years old it's not is it no so what, what kind of what, what what years were these so we joined when did we join 2019 right we so you, joined. you know zoo magazines lads mags are dead yeah um Webcam was really the next step, I'd say, yeah. after all of those magazines where women started having control of maybe a bit more of, course. of what they were doing. Obviously, Babe Station. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Shout out to Babe Station. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> still there. Is still it have, still there? Yeah. Still going. Wow. I remember uh, in uni, everyone would take bets to see when their text would show up on the screen. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Jesus. So that's so that's. You've done the chatter bait. Someone said join OnlyFans. What kind of state was OnlyFans in at that point? It was good. Yeah. But it was very, it was very new. Were so you I still on chatter bait at the time? You're still on chatter bait. Right. Cause we're, tr what we do is we try and get our chatter bait audience over to our OnlyFans. Uh, my that great was our aim. Yeah. So we started building an audience. So you've, you've, sorry to stop me. So you're already ready for social media then you you understanding organically it's why i tell people you can't necessarily always teach business it has to be felt so you knew you needed to migrate these audiences from from platform to platform yeah, yeah. and then yeah send them always send them from one place to another well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best way you Double can do it yep 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 so yeah we were sending them to only fans and we started building that audience up 
and then we got to when when did we start webcam in january january 2019 and by the time september we'd both quit our jobs so let me pause you there because i think that there's there's a bit bit of depth i'd like to go into so you're both okay with public nudity now you know people may see you who know you what's the conversation you have with each other because what a lot of people are fearful of and i hope my listeners are uh, smart enough to know self belief and sticking to what you believe is applicable to every bit of industry not just saying you should all go and take your kit off um <laughs> because people go it's not applicable to me it really is because most people i know who are successful don't care what people think and even though they may not want to do only fans and only fans people may want to do business it's all the same pot that, that you, you pull from so you're both then having the conversation with yourself saying right you know we, we've got kids so was there the potential conversation this could you know if we carry this on they may know so what is the mind frame mindset like between you two going forward into this i think when we first started uh, my mum always told me that people will talk but it, you're very quickly sh like short-lived news it, it, i said uh, on a podcast years ago i said it's something like two percent of people's time is is, is is in the conversation you think and 98 percent is their own bullshit yeah what was it like yesterday's news is tomorrow's shit paper oh, but, but it, in in senses of you know i've been the victim of salacious trolling and as bad as it can get and in it still takes up a minute part of your life in yeah. reality so you know your mum's told you this you've had the conversation with mike you're both obviously very good at it is this something you're now thinking right this is our career now this is screw beauty screw whatever you know events this is somewhere we can make some money and what what a um what uh year is this still 2019 still, so five years ago yeah and then where, where do you go from here because how old are your children at this point so chloe is oh you're better nine stanley was five so how do you balance you know this this kind of new industry you're going into with motherhood fatherhood is it does it help because what, what i think a lot of people want to ask is not necessarily whether they've got the open mindedness to do it just how do you do it yeah i think that at that point they were so young it was like i've got a few years to worry that they're gonna sort of see oh i, I meant in the, in the in just the sense of you know the dynamics of your day because oh, okay. a lot of people i know I, I coach now obviously through you and before a lot of uh, uh people in, in those industries and they're like well the hours are so easy i do this obviously the the the, the fee per hour is astronomical in terms of what they need it for but they're, they're saying to me actually i'm a better more present parent because yeah. these are the hours and this is the kind of framework i have for my day so i would miss a lot of co like um school plays yeah because i had clients booked in of and course. i couldn't just move my clients for that like, they'd get really pissed off with me so i just couldn't move anything so i'd miss that um our daughter she couldn't do any clubs or anything like that because we just didn't have the time we were yeah. both working on a saturday so it really opened i suppose the doors up to what well, Chloe's football where Chloe is with football because yeah. she would never be where she is in her football if, I, if we hadn't done the job that we do so I could jump on this bit so quick but I, I want to keep pulling <laughs> back so you're you're sailing through parenthood you've got this time and, and you know everyone everyone will look and go on but they weren't there well most people sacrifice for shit reasons let alone making money and actually pulling someone's future you know most people can't forget today for tomorrow um so where do you go next in 2019 because obviously this is now a career for you does anyone know is this something you cared that people knew uh, what because obviously back in the days of the page three girls you know um god it was the big one at the time let's say katie price her boobs are on there everybody knows your boobs <laughs> yeah. are out you, you you're almost people know where what you're about did yeah. people know or did people say hey jess and mike how's the salon or and you're like um <laughs> managing it like what, what do you tell people? And, and, and are you both the same in the respects of one of you is i don't give a shit what people think one of you is a bit more like well because my friends do tend to get what people think i am 
the complete opposite from young. I don't give a shit what anybody who doesn't have my last name or pay my bills thinks. Yeah. So were both of you like that? Because I think what a lot of people have been intrigued about is was the dynamic just you just met the right person at the right time in the right industry and this is why you're successful in it? I'd say I'm more so like that than Mike is, but I feel like with that work he was he didn't feel like that but then again it's different for women and men because men just get like a fist pump for yeah of course having well, sex every day this is what I, again i was going to go into there's so many uh, uh avenues and when i was sat last night to put some questions in my own head so did you feel different because a lot of people whether they admit it or not i know a lot of people get caught with these accounts who say they don't do you feel being a woman in the adult industry is different from being a man how you accepted the conversations you've had within the industry Oh, 100 percent like every time we post online i will get the black a lot they'll be like oh she does this or she gets um what was oh, some of the comments she drug, yeah and no one's ever going oh actually like he's the one doing it to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wild, it's isn't my it? It's wild. Yeah, yeah. So, like, again, they're, so, is, they're so focused on me. Do you think that's because certain people have an archaic view that a woman's body is more sacred than a man's? Because obviously, you get a guy with a body count of a hundred; he's a stud, must be yeah. rich, good looking, great abs, big dick. A woman who's got a hundred must be a hoe. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to still think that life is like that. It, it's, it's because I remember listening to Christina Aguilera's album. <laughs> And she was like talking about how it will change, well, and it never has changed. Look at um, who's the one who used to rob men for money? The rapper, the female rapper, Cardi B. Cardi B. I, I the minute she said that, I was like, okay, obviously women's lib are going to jump on this. Men would be lambasted across the news. No, nope, we're okay with that. And yeah. I was like, so that <laughs> that in, in inverse is a problem with the way women are viewed that. that that nothing they do is, is taken seriously. Yeah. That should be her uh, cancelled forever, but it's not. But yet, when women get their boobs out, they're somehow, you know. So, I didn't want to jump on it, but it just seems to flow that way. So, did you get people who found out, judge you both differently, or was it a collective? Or was it kind of like, a, wow, wish I had the guts to do things I want? Not Again, not necessarily saying you uh, people want to have sex, the money in public but did you find that empowered people because i grew up in a very very open-minded family who said you know as long as you're not hurting anyone do what you want as long as it aligns with your views yeah you know and i know obviously a lot of people in amish communities very christian households they struggle with that you know i, I know in the muslim world obviously it's outlawed and you see people who have to go to dubai do any fans they have to export their stuff to europe to load it up how did people approach you and Mike knowing or, or didn't they know? And was there a moment when, I don't know, a video slipped through or, or someone? Because I'm always intrigued to know if there was a point where you told people and went, look, let's get ahead of the curve. Or whether someone went, was that you bent over a car? In, and you're like, <laughs> shit. So before actually we done webcam and we actually uploaded a video on Pornhub. Oh, wow. Well, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. So it, and Pornhub only just started doing that. So you I get paid. Like, do they pay you? Yeah, so they pay like YouTube. Do they? Yeah. So you Shout get paid. Out to, I didn't even know that. I thought that was all. View. I thought that was all for media companies. No, yeah. So yeah, you get paid for. Oh, so the amateur stuff actually is amateur. Do you know what? Blow my mind. Yeah. Well, I'm not naive either, everyone, <laughs> by the way, and and I don't. I didn't never not watch porn, but I didn't think that was something you could actually make money. Yeah. Off of. So really, OnlyFans is an extension of just the mainstream people having a clear vessel to do it if you could always do it on AdWords you can always do it on Pornhub yeah I suppose it's just a platform where shout out to AdWords then for, uh, sorry for well, OnlyFans taking an industry that was already doing it and did, yeah. it, did it better so where are you then where are you showing uh, and what was the point where people obviously because your TikTok is so big I mean you know my PA Bella followed you before I knew who you were I'm, I say this <laughs> I don't I wasn't and I'm not on TikTok so I've got a client now who's not got as many as you but a million and she said, surely, so I said, I never go on to know. Yeah. Um, so when did people find out or did you tell people? So we, I remember having a, dis we were having a discussion and we was trying to work out how long was it going to take for someone to find us. Oh, so you had these conversations yeah, both Yeah, I, okay. I said six months. Did I say six months? No, I thought it was about six months. And I, thought, I, said, I said about a year. I was like, no one's going to see us. Like, there's so many videos on there. Like, and who whether, is going to come across us? And who would us? admit it? Cause, yeah, who would admit, yeah. Who would admit that? 
how long was it? Well, uh, uh, one month. Oh my God, really? And who was it? <laughs> it was a boy I went to school with. Okay. Yeah. And it was spread like wildfire, like I was still at school. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and it spread round everywhere. And then it went off into the school playground. It literally, the, the talk, we were the talk of South End. Right? Okay, so how how do you feel? Were you prepared? You said it went to the playground. So yeah. talk me through, was it cathartic? Was it like, it's out there now, now's a chance to deal with it? Or was there problems that came with it? Were there negatives? In the, in the purest sense of, was it hard then? So I remember knowing that everyone in the school playground knew because my friend had, I had a few friends call me and like ask me. So I knew that that school run that I was about to do was wow. going to be. The mum's morning gate was different. And how was the friend who told you? What, what, what did your, did you lose friends in that? Or, or the friend that told you was, uh, is this you or was this? Sent you ten year videos. Fair play. Didn't know. Uh, my friend messaged me and said she she sent a picture of a really old granny. She was like, <laughs> God. as long as this is not you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so made light of it. Yeah, made yeah. light of it. Uh, and I remember walking into that playground. We went we went together, didn't we? I remember that United said, Front. Oh yeah, wait, you're, you're coming with me. I'm not doing this on my own. Yeah, yeah. You could drop a pin in that playground. It was could so you? quiet. Like I've been walking through the gates and it was just silence. And any high fives. Any no. fist pumps? No. No, no. just literally okay. the silence and <laughs> little weed. whispers oh, right, okay. and, and stuff. But I thought, if I don't do it now, I could, oh, I could, have, I could either do two things. I could either never go back to that school ever again and never show my face, <laughs> yeah. or I'd just rock it. Yeah, 100%. And I rocked it, my head held higher, and I thought, no, fuck it. And, and, and what was the, did you have, did your phones blow up, family members, friends? Did Was anybody you thought <laughs> was behind you then you know moved away from you or ha- what was the give me a six month period of you know you've obviously you know it sounds like coming out you're now jess and mike they do this how did your kids see it did you have conversations how how can people empathize with your position what was the uh the status so, quo at that point i'm thinking i've got to ring my mom and tell her that she, she's gonna because it's hey went, mom skip to page three <laughs> i was like i have to tell her and her um, reaction was like, uh, she wouldn't knew that I was going to do something like that. I, think. I feel okay, like it was, right, yeah, okay. it just, it didn't come. She said to me, as long as you're safe, but like, yeah. that's all that she cares about. That as long as uh, my safety was that her biggest concern. Mm. And then I rung my sister because I thought she's going to hear it because if yeah, she's going yeah. around the school, like she's only a year older than me, so she's going to hear it. Rung her and she was, really sport with at that point nice um so anyone wasn't well she took a complete turn wow okay was this is this you find with people who you could say they're in the media for something or they're sent to prison was this because of other people or was this just she'd said it uh remonstrated with herself over it and went no and how was she with it because obviously you've said you've got this strange relationship at the start i don't know how you were in between but Obviously, for her to take it well, you must have at least been on good terms. Yeah. And what was she like? And how did that affect you? Because a lot of people will want to know why it didn't make you stop. So, one, her relationship had obviously always been rocky. Mm-hmm. She was very supportive of my bad relationship. Right, okay. Um, always there for me. Always, like, rooting for me. And... So before we actually done the porn, when I first met Mike, she um, she disowned me when I first met him, when I was happy. So it's like she was there when I was low. But is, every that, is that time because I was happy, she preferred it when, was she lonely, unhappy, chaotic? Well, she was mar- she's married. But, but, and but was she happily married? Cause I don't yeah. think she and is And this is the married. thing you find, I found this, people always seem to like you when you're, on a level that they know they're on. Yeah, and she and her partner had a business, um, yeah. a very successful business. And I, I just personally think that she didn't like the fact that we was making, we could potentially make more money than her. I think that's where the the rockiness. Plus, and I found this with people, and, and, and I say this because when you coach at the level I do, people tell you everything. Yeah. And people always tell me that a lot of the things they stand for, they don't really, the things they say they don't like, they do, but they're not strong enough to say. Do you think she envied this strength you had to go and do what you wanted to do? Because they've always said this, you know, any industry where you bear all, 
that's you. That's almost like people can see to your soul. So it takes a strong person yeah. to rock that. Yeah, I feel like that she probably didn't realise that I was just going to sort of go up that way. Like, I was good when I was, like, here for her. Of course. But the minute I started sort of becoming something a bit more that she, that was where she shut me off. And did it bother you? And also, aligned to that question, did more people back you than not? So I remember we was on webcam at the time that I got a message and it was, it said, it said, it said something along the lines of um, that she doesn't want it around her children. Her kids were just born and one at the time. So she didn't want it around her children and that when I finish, I can get back in touch with her. So my question would be why, why is a finished it's always um, going to be out there. Yeah, but apart from <laughs> that, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's almost like the biblical, you'll be reformed if you give it up and repent. Yeah. Uh, what we, she wanted me to do was to just bow down to her and course, be like, and sorry, but you're not, she's not paying my bills. Yeah. She's not looking after my kids. She's not the one at the weekends who are, who's working endlessly. Yeah, of course. So, unless you're going to, she's going to come in and solve all that for me, then there's no way I'm giving it up. And, you know, because obviously some people can't even, have that stance with friends down the road, random neighbours. So your sister says, come back when you're finished. What do you say? See ya? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. And is that is that because Jess, who grew up from the dad and got over the relationship and obviously had Mike's help, is this because you knew you were you were better than to bow down to that? Yeah, I just felt like I've pleased so many people in my life. Yeah, this is for you. And this yeah, this is something that I'm gonna do for myself and you're not going to control that. And how many people kind of stepped forward and went, no, fair play, you know. And, and I was having this conversation, actually, and I won't go into it because, again, it's, it's just such a cancelable subject. I was having a conversation about Gaza and Palestine and, and Zionism, and I said, you can support something without wanting to do it yourself. Yeah. You can, you know, I had a conversation with someone who came on the page and said, um, I'd written something about... Um, why I don't agree with the term cis in terms of female and male, because in biology it doesn't exist, and I don't think it does. But if you are a person transitioning to being a trans male, I will campaign for you. I will lend you the money to do it if that's what makes you happy. But I don't necessarily understand it. I wouldn't do it myself. Yeah. So do you find people said, hey, Jess and Mike, fantastic. You look great. You did it. We're behind you. Or some people are like, nah, yeah, great. And then they kind of slithered off into the background. Yeah, there was a few. Uh, say a few. Anyone surprise you? Naming no names, you shameless people. <laughs> um, Judgy. I, I say a few sort of, slivered off and what well, i don't have like a close relationship with yeah. them anymore they just but not fell out with them probably subscribed yeah and <laughs> to be honest like it was only my sister that was a real real big wow, issue okay. like compared to like no one Huge. has ever like loads of people would say to me i find a body like you i'll do it and, and do you know what is the funny thing i've heard that from so many people in that industry that people have actually gone yeah actually you know if I had a banging body and had sex like that, I wouldn't have a problem, but I don't, so I wouldn't. And then it comes back to that this, like, body is so important. Yeah. It makes people confident. It makes people, like, if, if they had a body like I had, then they'll do it. Like, yeah. And that's the one thing that stops them is how they're feeling oh, about the body. I've, I, and I would say this is a legitimate statistic. I reckon 5,000 women easily in my career have said to me, I would leave my husband if I was confident to get naked with someone else. I would leave my husband if I was confident enough to go on a date with someone who I thought was my level. I would have left my husband earlier if I'd been in the shape I was before the baby. Yeah. And this is why I campaign for people to be body positive with their own self-worth because I believe it's the missing puzzle to mental health, confidence, um, relationship management if you yeah. have were self-assured yeah so without again jumping into our relationship because i still want to get through this so <laughs> so it's out there now was it better or worse than you thought it would come across and once it was out did you have a conversation with your eldest and how did that go i think it actually came across so much better than i ever expected it to come across and i feel like then start, people started saying Oh, like you've really inspired me and my husband to have more sex. Or... Yeah, because there's the, there's a difference between being a porn star, if you want to call it that. I don't even know what to classify the industries as there, but to just being more physically aware and physically yeah. open. Yeah, and just like just showing real relate and uh, yeah. relationship sex and like 
That's what real bodies, like, because our bodies, as much as they are good, like, they're still wobbly, they're still jiggly, and they're still not Especially then, I guess. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's one of the problems I think Jordan Peterson says is, the version of men you see in, in especially 90, 2000 porn and women are so um, infinitely rare that it can, like, you know, I remember seeing, what's her name? As a famous female psychologist talk about the fact that women's actions in porn ruined what men thought women would act like during sex. The yeah. way the orgasm, the way they look, the things they would do. And that blew apart most of the the way men viewed sex yeah and i feel like that's why amateur porn is so important like yeah. the fact that like, i've got stretch marks like, i've had kids that like, people can relate to me my body and the fact that like, i've got an average side of <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not like fucking massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you like, see the, you see the, 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 the and, and shout out to a lot of the podcast companies which actually now interview women and men in porn, and the guys like, I didn't even fancy the woman's like, it felt like I was being impaled. Yeah, the guy was like, like women don't was, like that. And this is the thing, and I think, do you feel like because I think someone in the comment section said, would you say? your role is to promote average people having great sex. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like even though your physiques are but nowhere near average now, yeah. but we'll go on to that. <laughs> do you feel that now you're being accepted by the average person? Do you think it was because you're promoting this healthy attitude yeah, to definitely. normal people having great sex? Also like if our video may last ten minutes, it may last five, it may last two, like we're gonna keep it as it is. Like Oh, because yeah, um it was on um, who's the big podcast company when they had a British porn girl on who said that they kind of filmed him for two minutes he'd he'd uh, orgasmed he'd gone off then he lasted for 20 minutes and they cut it the other way around yeah. and she was like it didn't last for half an hour it wasn't like you saw but but someone will view that and go I can't pile drive her for 35 yeah. minutes you know, and then it, thinking it, that they like there's a huge obviously thing with men who feel like they've got a big willy they've got to go for half an hour like there's so many things that women don't even like like yeah, that's not yeah. even what women want so do you feel that porn at that point was something not that you were both on a crusade to make it look real that you were happier to be more relatable and do you think that's part of the success because i'm going to come on to your tiktok which isn't their porn site because someone said to me is that tiktok about porn i went no but yes but no but do you think that that kind of I say average mentality because you use the word average is that part of the reason you think you were more successful and, and you were m more okay with it? Yeah, I think so. I think the fact that we just were us. Yeah, of course. And whatever we happened in the bedroom, we just filmed it. And oh, and is that is that literally how it happened? You yeah, were like, we'll just film us. We only film when we actually like, want to have sex. We won't force ourselves into having sex oh, so to film. Yeah. So it's always all like organic. Like always is natural. Yeah, it just we just do it off the cuff, and, and still to this day we do it off the cuff, and we want people just to know that we're just normal people. Wow, I see. Yeah, um, that's that's actually fact. So apart from the tripod being there, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's all we set up. Yeah, um, so, which goes into TikTok, I suppose, because that is again what makes us show that we're just normal people. So I, I want to pull back just quickly. So we we, we jumped off. So when you had the conversation with your daughter, you said it went better than you thought. Yeah. Um, Did so, any conversations with anyone after you mentioned that go worse than you thought? No. So, so I didn't go with her yet. With clearly. her, she got to year six, and well, our TikTok went viral. Our TikTok was going viral at this point. Oh, so that was growing at the same time. Right. Yeah, and obviously kids were very much on TikTok. So then they started seeing um, us on TikTok, and she came home and she said, um, "Mummy, are you a porn star?" <laughs> through the p word in. yeah because you are jess and mike miller aren't you so it's not like you've got these these suited the, these um stage names yeah yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah she was like oh uh are you a porn star what is a porn star but i'd already had a conversation with her that i do only fans yeah. and that it's like lingerie and sometimes i joke that it was like i'll get her boobs out right. so i very much sort of you've been priming her for the bigger conversation ever yeah. since we've, we've done it i've always sort of been it's so what they're doing with aliens in the news. Yeah, I've, I've been just, you know, even to this like, day, like with Stanley being year five, I wear my only, I'll wear my only fans top. Like I've got a. Oh, uh, so merch. subliminally showing him that it's not, yeah, yeah, they do that. He knows what only fans already. Yeah, that is, wow. Okay. Yeah, year five. Uh, and 
I'll, I'll say I'll get him. Oh, mummy gets the boobies out. Like, you know, like sort of light hearted stuff for him. But with Chloe. Well, it's not. I say this to a lot of people, whether, whether you were the opinion that you'd do it, you'd sanction it, you'd pay for it, or you don't like it. It's. <laughs> It, it, it's the analogy I remember a guy the other week said oh I don't like my wife sending you underwear pictures for check-ins I said do you go to the beach and yeah I said that's strangers you <laughs> probably will perth no offence I've seen enough yeah you know, I, it's so like, sec- like yeah. you're not but, even but looking also, at that it, it is and I get some people again shout out to people for many religious reasons um, don't approve of things but in the world we're growing up in with children showing your boobs is and i had this conversation funny enough with with someone last night who did send me a negative question about you and having kids and i said i know of you and you give it up for free on a saturday night to people you don't know and don't get paid for it i know which one i'd rather explain to my daughter yeah and i say that unequivocally to everybody yeah because it's like the people were wildly i i didn't get vaccinated and i wouldn't be in my whole stance on covid we won't talk about but i said you will shoot some lines of columbia marching powder if you make down the bar but you won't let pfizer use a drug they researched it's wild people's double standards um, I, don't, I don't get drunk around my children i don't I drink and get drunk around the kids i don't feel like uh for me it's appropriate i don't want to see my i don't want my kids to see me drunk but so many people get drunk and i don't judge them for doing it and this is what i always say to everyone you know um uh judge less the what's the biblical phrase um judge less the be they be judged most people if you were to actually stop emotional content and say what do you do and what do we do most people would fall afoul of their own morals yeah oh 100 you know? yeah i know people who never got paid to go through 50 60 men yeah you know? and 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 it wasn't their partner yeah their husband they weren't and when i say this to people about it you know i used to i used to coach lots of strippers and i used to say there can't be a more powerful position than men giving you money for you showing off what god gave you to the point when they think you like them but you clearly don't if that's not powerful i'm unaware what is yeah you know and i used to say that's why you know i would never go to a strip club and no one will ever go and oh yeah you were i've never i went to one stag they wouldn't bother them once because i was like i know they don't like me it's not organic what's the point but it's so powerful if guys believe they do yeah um so you've got this position now where you've told your kids the people who love you are fine with it tiktok's blowing up when did people have this interest Cause i said to people if people didn't like what they did their tiktok went up one and a half mi- mi- to put that into terms i said to people if you put matchsticks on the floor it'd fill your room yeah that many people love your interactions how different is that to your only fans or did you find it was they loved your only fans because your personality is on tiktok because you know bella followed you yeah um i don't really know why people like us to be honest what do you think because without you know you can be arrogant there must be a reason why you have this you don't just do car crashes or these videos where somebody i don't know pranks someone which i I fucking can't stand the fact that they get famous from it what is it about the millers that people want to see i just think we do i suppose relatable stuff that everyone does in their relationship and we just make a joke of it and when did you realize that was starting to get so big and did it did it go from you know uh organically a slow thing or did you find the more you did on only fans the more your twitter grew or was it vice or did did people see your twitter uh, your twitter your tiktok and go oh click the link tree so it actually you you won't know this but it all started so in lockdown um tiktok done a challenge what was called flip the switch I don't, no, I don't remember. Does anyone remember Flip the Switch? Shout so, out to Sophie. She's always on TikTok. Like. They would. So it was J Lo and her husband in the mirror, and she flipped the oh, switch. Oh, they changed and they to each changed. other. Right. I did see people do that. Yeah. We was in the garden, and I, see this I one. said to him, "Right, if we flip the switch, and then when the light goes off, you're fucking <laughs> from behind." Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we posted it on Pornhub, and it went. It literally went viral. Wow, that easy. Yeah. And then that was probably it for us with TikTok, yeah. So did you find, because people always ask, and I've, I've recently, I know you spoke to Alex about it, I find I find Instagram with the like was easy organically, but I find TikTok fascinating. So did it then just become everything you did kept the viral content type yeah. of style? You just follow us just... Yeah, it just, I think we was right in lockdown when yeah. TikTok was... You know, it was pushing content and all the dances were big, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, and so. we just rose with that really. And we rose with OnlyFans through lockdown as well. Did it did it influence your OnlyFans? Oh hugely, yeah. yeah. So 
people would go over to our own fans. Yeah. yeah, at the beginning of TikTok, you could have your link and stuff in your bio. Oh, right. Uh, they, they're very strict on it now. Oh, we actually lost a our account at 750,000 followers. Wow. So we've actually grown again to 1.6. So we actually would have more. Followers. I know you were telling Alex about the, the, the violations and the way we found the minute you post underwear, we're, we're, we've been stalled from growing. And I, and I then, because I don't understand it, went just do more of it, not realizing that the more of it was kept reducing our, our, yeah. our footprint. So you've got this 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 big only fans now, you your your TikTok is huge. How is Jess's confidence? Uh, weirdly it took a real tumble. So talk us through that. Um so through lockdown, obviously all this was going huge yeah. and my anxiety just started going. I'm thinking I've got to go back in the gym and everyone's gonna know who I am and it's going to be really uncomfortable. Everyone's going to be looking at me. There was a real, I was worried about my safety. We'd get a lot of trolls. Um, so what's it like being, you know, and I say, you know, only fans, TikTok famous. Was it, have there been negatives to that? Oh yeah. Huge negatives. People saying, Oh, that person on our life. What would he keep saying? To the point they're going to kill you or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Like, stalk, like saying that they're stalking you or, you know, like being and are very... These, are, these, are these credible threats? Are you told kind of take these things seriously or do you kind of, you both, it, it comes he, with the territory? I think it comes with the territory, but in the back of my mind, I think he's a bit different to me, but I would think uh, that woman, that yeah, I'm worrying. And I'm thinking I, I can't walk the streets without worrying that people are going to know where I live. And did you get any kind of anyone ever come up to you and like as the Tesco and be like you're just a mic and yeah anyone's boyfriend kind of go I know you oh, uh, um, yeah, yeah it all just became very weird like people wondered, were just yeah, recognising us when we'd just go out anybody ever come up to you and go you're from only fans and be just like brazen with it you know they follow you and they love you you know yeah oh wow okay I yeah just, there's still that I I watched a, a TikTok interviewing people in the street and he mentioned a porn star a British one and he went you know this is and it was always couples, and the guy would go, uh -huh, yeah, that's, uh, you know who that is. And the girl would be like, who's that? And it was this, and obviously they cut to the ones who didn't have a clue. But So did people come up to you and be like, I love what you do? Yeah, we get that as well. You empower us to, I don't know, start it, do it. Because yeah. I've had so many clients who are not only in the industry, but outside, and they're like, yeah, we follow her. L you know, couldn't ever do porn, but I love the fact that she's um, herself. Yeah. And that empowers people. And I said to people, you don't have to do the thing to be empowered by someone else having the guts to do the thing that yeah. they want to do. Yeah, I think that... I feel like OnlyFans, just as a whole, is just so empowering to women as well. Like, the fact that you've got so much control over your content and, you know, the porn industry, they they had so many rights over Mia Khalifa. And That's it, Mia Khalifa. Yeah, like, it? and it's sad, really, that that they've got so much on her and they won't delete whereas that's why only fans is so empowering to women because if you want to delete you can in the end oh right okay yeah if you want to delete a whole profile you can delete it no one's stopping you and what's it like to work for or work with only fans are they fair do you know i know people want to know you know is it something that you you know and obviously you wouldn't want to burn your bridges publicly but it, it, have there been more positives than negatives yeah we absolutely love only fans yeah. as a as a whole the only you know negative is that you do have to and I, people think that we don't work hard <laughs> only fans do absolutely nothing they're just a platform they're not promoting us yeah, in any single yeah. way like you have got to promote yourself and yeah like obviously they take a percentage but it's worth every penny and you said what 30 percent 20 percent wildly low yeah wildly low no wonder people make you know i we're, we're i'm followed by a lot of people who i didn't know i think um she always, she's great actually she always likes pics megan rose barton hansen i can't remember what oh, yeah, yeah. Time. i think i saw someone she done 800 grand in a month on only yeah fans. do you know what the biggest top earner is do you know how much they earn do you know what i saw in the world or yeah i, I saw I, I i read it out to to my the other day because it was on um lad bible i think isn't tiger one of the top with two million a month wasn't who was the top top i can't remember what was it what was the top earner what's the, what's their what, what's their monthly what was Well, it's, well, it's, it's sort of yeah, I know that. Um, I know that, that MMA that. girl 
who Paige Van Sant. Oh, yeah. She put up her five months and it was like 800 grand, 700 grand, one yeah. million. And I was it like, crazy money. Well, even if you're taxed to high heaven, that's fortune. Yeah. So. Them top earners are killing it. Yeah. And I mean, someone asked me the other day and said, what would you say if your daughter went to do it? And I said, that's a massively contextual question. Mm. But you're talking about building, because most people can't conceive of, for instance, you know, there's there's a thing in fitness about PTs in 10 grand a month. And someone said, oh, I don't know. I said, well, let me put it in perspective. You go to David Lloyd, Barclays Bank, um, any large kind of public or private company that aren't um, oil or... Um, steel and the top people won't net 10,000 a month most of them I think you know the average legal salary in the UK is 90,000 you know top barristers two three hundred thousand but I've coached um, people only fans that, that net that yeah and I've said to people the fact that you can leave after five years with houses paid for schools paid for I don't think people realize that for some people, for instance, I think in the 90s, there was a big thing about Hooters girls all being legal lawyers in the making. Yeah. Because they realized that to be a pretty lawyer cost you 100 grand a year. You can earn that in Hooters on tips. Yeah. So why not? You're not hurting anyone. You're not killing anyone. If you can deal with the, the amount of people that I see in Dubai who are escorts, who will shag random people for random money, I don't see how the world has this view on the adult industry anymore when it's people like you who are controlled in loving relationships and who are just basically saying here's a camera on our wall yeah you do it anyway i'm now just being paid yeah. because i think a lot of it comes from the fact that a lot of people message me and say i couldn't say what you say on your stories i'm like because that's because you're too scared to yeah they're worried about backlash they're worried about backlash, but yeah, i'm not everyone, you're, has, opinion, and everyone has opinions not. but and that's what i mean better to be paid for your opinion or your persuasion than not yeah. because at the end of the day i think a lot of people if i think a lot of people aren't financially minded and and you know, you might say to someone, if they'd given you a million pound job in boots, yeah, well, I probably would have taken that, but that wasn't the option. And now yeah. the ability to make, you know, most people can't get on the property ladder. Most OnlyFans models can get on the property ladder month one. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing. Um, and, and do you feel that it's a misunderstood industry? And do you feel like people, obviously I know you, but people won't. Do you think there's this broken image of what a, 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 an OnlyFans or porn star actually is? Yeah, well, I feel like people think that I would just have sex with any man, Gavin. That's how it, it, that people, in the questions, they were like, is it promiscuous thing? And I went, it's her husband. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's a fact that possibly the most least, because most, a lot of people in the news get um, arrested for sending sex tapes of themselves to partners. Yeah. You're just uploading it. I tell you, most of them OnlyFans girls would not touch. They, 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 they I think you become even more picky with who you'd even have sex with mm. and if you're having sex for a tape it's very much for a tape like it's they are, there's no connection in that at all yeah like when it comes to the girls who are making they're doing it for the money and i say this because i've said it publicly and, and bella will know i found easily and this will this will kind of transition onto our part that everyone I coach in the adult industry or who are dancers, they are harder working, harder dieting. They're never late. I've just said, if you were to say crudely, do you think more doctors, nurses, dentists are better clients? I'd say no. Ironically, the professionals are worse. And I know from growing up, a lot of people who are professional, who are a lot more promiscuous than anyone I knew who was a stripper or dancer. Yeah. I saw more doctors doing the walk of shame than I ever did dancers or, who had the choice because of their economic stability to pick and choose. My my friend, she's an expert. I'm just not going to mention who she is. The clientele that she gets, they are all married, heavily 100%. paid men and who... That, yep. It's great. Like, I love hearing the stories because it's insane. And you feel insane. that's why, because you know, like I do, the the what lies beneath that you're not able to be judged yeah definitely and i i just it just i just wouldn't like people go like when i go out with my friends and he might get a message going oh i saw jess out oh like oh i hope she won't be annoyed. like sorry but i'm not do you think i'm gonna go for a one night stand with or like give anyone that pleasure <laughs> I don't bloody think so. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's that's what I think society lacks on 
just a, a multi multitude of levels is the fact that people don't understand what you're doing and why you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Like I people won't think it, but I even if I was single, there's no way that I would be going around giving anyone like something that I've worked hard at. Mm. You know I, mean? I feel like I'm like no, like you'd have to be really special to yeah. to get anywhere. But do with you think me now. people I understand it because I've been rooted in psychology most of my adult life. Do you think people can't understand the distinction between what you do for a job and how you, because I remember coaching it when I lived in Bristol, I had a health club, dozens of my friends were dancers and they'd be like, I earn more than you. I work harder than you. The chance of me being as easy as you think is, and, and I say to people, it's harder to get with someone who's got more money than you and more options than you. Yeah. That they're the least likely to be easy yeah. you've ever met. Oh, exactly. But like you're more likely to you know, I, don't, I don't know what i'm gonna say and i don't think it's very right what i was gonna no, say I, I think we all knew we were gonna say they're, they're, it, most normal people are far easier to get in bed than people with options and it but it, it's true and i think everyone knows it. and you know i think that is the rub most people know that they shouldn't judge because if you were to turn like i said i know people who given it up dozens of times with people they've never met and never got paid for it yeah i know who i'd rather be yeah whether you would choose to do that or not we're talking about who would judge and most people can't judge no um, so how did we meet because i think a lot of people have said to me recently and, and i've seen on your stories you know how do you feel about yourself in an industry where you're naked and now you look remark whether people liked your body before or not you in my opinion you look radically better now how has that impacted you and how did we meet so i suppose before i met you i got to around october and i really hated my face like i say my face was the biggest thing i've always had like quite a though, yeah. um structured face and i just could see it changing it was getting rounder and like my skin was getting red i felt like i was gonna go into perimenopause to be honest mm -hmm. like I, I, my body just was not feeling right so i started making some changes myself and I thought, right, I'm going to get back and do some exercise. And then, obviously, Nadine, her picture came up on my on my, uh, on my feed. And I went from her page straight to yours, watched your story, and thought, that is the man for me. <laughs> and, and, you know, it didn't come without blowback, which a lot of my clients will know, because, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people who fail, the very reasons that Jess excels appear to want to sabotage anybody else starting the plan, which is fine. It, it, it actually doesn't ever end. And in fact, I found the more people tell people not to do a plan because they don't like me, the more people look at everyone who does the plan and has gone, there must be a fucking reason why the, all these people love him. Mm. And they do it. So what was, because obviously I think one of the TikTok, someone came on and said, he's this, he's that, you won't get on, he'll, he'll, he'll treat you badly and scam you. Obviously you didn't listen, but what did, what did you feel? For, what did you soon learn about people and their accountability and, and generally the things that you have flown through that they haven't? I think that it is obviously how seriously you take it and your, and your mindset to whether, like, and obviously now I am where I am, I know that all them people didn't stick to the plan. 100%. <laughs> Who were angry with it. And, and do you know what? I say to people, it's okay to fail, but it's not okay to not blame yourself. Because yeah. I failed astronomically in my life and never did I blame anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You, you, I remember my mum saying to me, yeah, that's my mum, she's like, you're the only one to put that food in your mouth. You're the only one that can change your life. Like, she'd very much, I remember like being in my room crying and chucking stuff around and she said, like, well, how are we going to change this? And, I, and then she'd always say to me, you're, you are the only person that can change that because I'd be stropping that my clothes didn't fit me. She said, well, you know, tomorrow's a different day. Like, you're the only one that's going to be able to get back in, them, back in them jeans. And she was always very to the point and right. That's good. So I suppose I had her, Yeah. Um, like, with that. And I've always had that embedded in me. Like, I'm the only one that can make this change. Like, obviously... I, I was I didn't know what to eat and I was every single day I was like I don't know what to eat I I, I need someone to I, I could do the gym but I just couldn't do the food that was where I my I was wrong and that's where I needed someone to help me and I remember one of the things you said to me after I think a few few, few weeks you know and you said you know I've not done one thing that I shouldn't have done why do you think some people and and I've said this unless you're possessed or psychotic 
every single action I've ever done since I was born was because I wanted to do it. Yeah. None of this, oh, I didn't know I was eating the packet of crisps. You did, you just didn't <laughs> want to stop. And then it, it fucking rocks my world that lawyers, dentists, doctors say this to me. They go, oh, Scott, I didn't know what happened. I picked up the crisps on like, and you purposefully kept eating them knowing you weren't supposed to, don't lie. Yeah. And don't be okay with lying. Yeah. So at what point do you think some people, because I've had people and you've had people say to you, have you had a tummy tuck? Have you had lipo? Did this happen? These aren't real transformation pictures, you know. When did you feel like you were taking it seriously? Or is this just something that you said, right, the minute I sign up, I'm going to do 100% of the work I think I should do? I was serious from the get-go. Yeah, serious from the get-go. I was serious the minute I saw your, fa- saw your page. I was like, I said to Mike, I said, that this, I'm going to do this. And I knew... Do you know, it was the trust in you that I, like, I trusted you straight away. Mm-hmm. Trust you from the, the transformations on the page. And I just put every single bit of that trust into you and knew that I knew that if I follow everything that you say, that it's going to work. Yeah. And I think that's the major thing. I think if you don't have that, and again, it comes back to trust. If people don't have trust in their life and they can't let go and give that trust to someone else, then that's, they're not going to succeed. And I find that's one of the biggest problems because obviously this this podcast is partly to do with my brand is that people, I say, here's a tried and tested blueprint, just do what I say and then they don't do it and then they blame me for doing what they decided to do, which isn't what I told them to do. Yeah. And they blame me as if I literally shoved food into their yeah. mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and it's why I have no... Um, I have no conscience to apologize to the people that do that because they're adults and it's yeah. wild to choose to do things you're not meant to do and then blame anyone but you. Yeah, especially if they're not going to admit to it. It's the weirdest thing when people try and get a refund when they've broken the rules and I say to them, so you want me to suffer the penalty from what you did and you're okay with that. It's fucking wild. I was literally terrified that I did not want to be chucked off plan. I was like just wanted to that's why that people pleaser in me but that, that, that works came for you out. the fear yeah it works for me and i like that's where i'm glad that i have that people pleasing in me because i was like i want to pressure i'm going to impress you every week yeah, yeah. i still want to do it now well i said to someone the other day when someone said oh and bella actually sat here's another one she never was late never ate off plan never didn't do never put a foot wrong and i said to people it's actually easy to physically choose every action you do you've just got to wrestle the fact that it shows me how serious you are. Because I say, I've not got any of the problems everyone comes to me for, none of them. I'm blessed to have been brought up not to have them. But at what point then did people start seeing you and thinking, wow, I want to be like this? Because obviously you get, I said something the other day, you, you're, you practically answer more questions on my brand than I do. Yeah. People are like, how do I do this? Who do I ask? My inbox you know, was, oh, at it's, the it's last massive, two yeah. days has been asked. <laughs> but do you feel a sense of pride? Because obviously, and, and what I do say to people about Nadine, you know, and, and, and shout out to Mike, he's on plan as well. Um, he's got the, the metabolic rate of a nine-year-old at the moment, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and I say to people, these are wildly successful people acting like I they should take me seriously. Well, yeah, I get people who unfortunately don't have that, who should have that, who take it as a joke. So what, what is it in you that then said, do you know what? I'm just going to listen to this person and just not fuck about. Is it always something you both have been like or... No. Does it come from the success you've had around that, that you know because you did everything you had to do properly only fans with you did yeah. everything you had to do with the pressure on uploading so to so, so Tinder, Twitter, Twitter, TikTok work. <laughs> Is this something you knew right? Like Nadine, I've had the success. I just need to do that to what this guy's saying. And obviously, you both look wild now. So, like before you actually, the year before, I had two coaches and. I didn't take it seriously at all, to be honest. And what do you think that is? Because I, I, I never have arguments. I don't care. But I do see questions. Someone DM'd me last night and said, I'm picking up the pieces from a plan you gave to a client. And I went, no. No. No, no context, nothing. She may well have had a shit result and a bum time afterwards, but it's not through anything I did or would have advised because that's not what this is about because you can see the people that do it and the thing people always leave out and, and they do it in you know they do it in relationships oh she cheated on me so what happened oh well i was vacant for three weeks turned my phone off every night oh so really you didn't ask her but you did yeah maybe well why did you leave that out oh okay do you think people make the excuses that you weren't prepared to make i think when i got them other pts i just was not ready i was 
I was not ready to not go out for dinner. Yep. I was not ready to not have a social life. I, I was not, yeah, I was just, I thought that I could do it. You could do it all and have it all. Yeah. yeah everyone does. Everyone thinks yeah. that you can be successful in business or as a parent or as an athlete and still do the shit which no one who's successful as a parent or an athlete or a model does. I say to people all the time, someone, funny enough, an only fans girl who looks incredible and I'm glad she saw through, she went, I'm about to go away. I'm worried about staying on plan. I said, stop looking at it like it's something you're never going to do for the rest of your I life. I know this person, don't I? We do, you do. We don't <laughs> We view, had this conversation we, yesterday. We did, did she? Yeah. yeah. And I said to her, and she's got the ability to look world class. Yeah. She, she, you know, she, 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 she's an amazing, I, I, I got on with her really well. And I said, we, I don't view like I've never been, I, I, I'm, I'm an ex-pro athlete and, and, and my dad's in shape, my mum's in shape. But the point is, I don't view going on a holiday as a thing to have to stay on plan. Like business, if I bought a Rolls Royce tomorrow, I would have to then curtail the rest of my year to more net profit here, less there, probably not going to be on that big holiday. I said the same with this, if I go on holiday tomorrow, I may well smash the buffet. It'll be a salad for lunch. I'll have to work out in the afternoon. I may well have to forego dinner the way it was. If I wake up the next morning, I might fast. Lunch might be beers, paella, dinner maybe. We all in shape have to live like someone thinking to be in shape. Yeah. It's not something you slot in and slot out of your life. People think my plan is something that you do and then stop doing. But like you know, being in shape is about living your only fans creators your day is about being being in shape is about living in shape yeah the, the water the workouts you know no one in my family says why are you working out on holiday that's what an in shape person does they yeah. enjoy working out it's great to work out and that's what it's great to work out so do you feel that people now look at you as if it's something because i remember someone said what you can do when you finish the plan as, someone, else, someone asked me that when I'm never finishing the plan. <laughs> yeah, because I've never, I've been doing my plan since I was 19. Yeah. I literally love every single day. I love having my food. I love having the, the exercise of my life. I just, life was harder when I was off plan. Yeah, I say to people all the time. And I think you have to, people see your wild transformations, you and Mike. I think the picture you put up in the gym the other day, blew people away two people two people actually should know better said it was photoshopped no and i said I like, and, 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 and i can't people ask me or oh, send me checking pictures unless it goes online that's gdpr and i said i can send you videos of them i've seen them in real life my face might have been a bit photoshopped yeah but uh, yeah really, but, um we'll give that <laughs> okay uh, but the, the gist is these people love being in shape so everything they do is now not a chore because unless you wake up, and I said to people about money making money, once you obtain a certain amount of wealth, unquote, the sleepless nights don't become sleepless nights because you're not broke anymore. You're you're now, wow, one more night won't matter because this and I'll do this. And do you feel that people don't get far enough because they don't take it serious enough to feel what you feel on plan now? Yeah, I feel like only probably maybe the last six weeks i reckon that i've really got to a point where i'm like oh you changed a lot in that month period yeah like i, I always say to people because I'll, I'll get people messaging me and say oh i'm on week one i'm like you're on you know like like yeah of course. Now I'm back pictures, i changed my new like yeah. week one and then week two another my new and then i think it got to week eight and then i just started go like we started seeing like i could see my body really making some changes i feel like you just need to hit that point i think it's it's it, it, a lot of pseudo experts call it when you become fat adapted it's called resting quotient 0 0.7 when your body then becomes metabolically flexible enough to that carbohydrate intake the major sluggish now gives you energy yeah the fats that used to slow your digestion make you cognitively smarter you look better in the mirror and i always said to people i'm i'm i look 20 percent better when I lose the final two kilograms and that 20% mentally makes me go, I'm gymming today. Yeah. And once you're in that mindset, you change exponentially more. It's like they say the first hundred grand is the hardest. The first million is the easiest. It is because to get a hundred grand from nothing is hard, but to make a million out of a hundred grand is so much easier because you don't need probably 80 of the hundred grand. Yeah. It's, and I feel it's the same with you, your body at that, I would say it's seven to 10 week, you drop that couple of kilograms, which showed your glutes, yeah. made your face come down. And anybody seeing that is going to go, yep, I'm on. Yeah. Like Nadine said, after the ninth month, when people started to go, holy shit, she was like, oh, 
I'm living 24 seven, holy shit. Yeah. And I said to people, that's the difference that if you get to that stage, yeah, then it doesn't become a life. Cause then you're like, like people say, Oh, how does it feel to be in shape? I'm like, you can't tell someone until they feel it. And once you feel it, nothing you do will become a chore. Yeah. I used to also like, I spoke about the first week that it, it felt so long. The first week felt yeah. long. The second week felt long. I'd say all the weeks felt long probably up to like again the eight weeks mm -hmm. and then it just felt like my life and it all just fits in i don't even think about the, the like i think about obviously the next way in but it all just i don't i don't i'm not waiting for it yeah of course like, i'm just like, you're in it now yeah i'm just i just go with it i look forward to the gym every single day i don't yeah. think i've ever looked forward to going to the gym so much in my life and looking at myself in the mirror yeah but, no, but, <laughs> but, but okay for this way you know bella's just done a, a photo shoot at what point do people not understand that the reason you hate looking yourself in the mirror is the exact reason you will love it people yeah. say to you how can she love posing okay why do you hate posing and they yeah, go you don't want to look at yourself uh, and i go so imagine the pain of that the other way yeah and that's why people i get i get pictures of people that go don't post this but i saw my arm in the mirror of the conservatory and i'm like <laughs> because you never like looking at like do you know understand how that's more powerful than having a ferrari you can't drive a ferrari unless it's dry and the traction controls on and it and there's no potholes you can look at your body 20 it's why when someone said yesterday on a post and it, she said but it's just too expensive what it is i said for what you get it's wildly cheap yeah because if i give you a um a meal for 200 quid that meal's there and gone just a memory if you sign up for 400 pound you get to live in that body every second of every day and i know now i would sell everything i have if someone said you can either be in shape or have the money you have i wouldn't swap if someone went to me if they give me my body right now and they said it's going to cost you 10 grand and i'll, I'll pay it you would and then and funny enough i always give the examples of when i've had wealthy clients offered to give me stuff you know we had one lady whose husband had a uh, uh, um, not Andrew, what are they? Jaguar garage, and she lost nine stone, got married, and he, he gave me a car that I gave back. Yeah, because she went for what it cost us. I, I didn't realize this is how it felt, uh, and that was just off one day. And I say to people, it's it's called the beta region paradox. The pain you feel starting something new will be infinitely harder than staying where you are. But once you get through that stage, the value you get from attaining that level of discipline and those results will be wildly better than the pain you felt. Yeah. But most people, like you said, they get one, two, three, four in and oh, I needed to go out. And I'm like, you may think you need to go out, but if you'd have waited till week 10, you could have gone out every fucking week. Yeah, and feel good going out. Like when, when I go, go out now, now it's, it's just completely different. I'm going out before and I'd feel all sluggish and like the minute I'd eat, I'd blow and it was just horrible. But now I'm going out, I'm wearing what I want to wear. Yeah. I, the next day I'm leaner than I Yeah, wow, was isn't the it? next day. And don't you feel that you enjoy it more? And I enjoy it more, yeah, because yeah, I feel absolutely amazing. Yeah. It's just, worth, it was worth every single no to everyone that I said no to. And like I said to my friends, I'm not coming out. And they you all think, were supportive. And you think that's the power then of of if we go right back is you're so self-confident with doing what you want to do that the plan was just an extension of the only fans and the being on your own and, and meeting mike that you've not cared what people think if it will get you to a destination yeah definitely and can you teach that because some people say to me but you know from from getting through the trauma and, and starting the only fans and being you know um internet celebs and, and then getting in shape she's found this how can you teach people to start making choices where they care about themselves more than what people think because i find that people always say to me i wish i could speak like you i said you can if you just remember that everyone that follows your page doesn't have any impact on your life whatsoever yeah yeah i think that no one really cares do they <laughs> their opinion is like realistically they're going to say something about you and they'll forget about it five minutes later and it, they, they don't care at all that they've affected you hmm. and it, it feels good for them at that that point but really they don't they don't care no there's not one part of them that care like no. when people say poor kids to me you don't care about my kids no, of course like you don't think about my kids daily you don't think about poor kids like just think about your own kids don't worry about mine like and i think a lot of the time when people say stuff like poor kids if you shone a light on their parenting 
it leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've seen, and I have a conversations because I find that, and I get it with athletes as well. It's not just in your industry where people go, but he's away all the time. I'm like, you're nine stone overweight, drinking every night, shouting at your wife in front of your kids. Him being vacant to earn money is far less damaging than what you're showing your kids. And they look at you and go, well, well, what it is is I've got thyroid and I, I like a beer. And I'm like, no, he's coming back with 30 grand to take his kids to Disney World. You're teaching your kid it's okay to be overweight, lazy, and shout at your wife. Yeah. And they never want to hear it. And they're all those ones that comment on our stuff, people like that. So what I want to talk about was have you f- how have you found fit shaming now? Because I've oh. seen some of the comments. And it's wild that I would assume someone in your industry wouldn't give a fuck what I said about their appearance because you're frankly naked on a screen. Yeah. What has it been like? I I just absolutely think it's it's crazy that people can go onto my profile and just say that's disgusting or you look better before. Like, I didn't feel better before. And it's not up to them what I look like either. Again, do you feel that people think their opinion is meant to matter? I yeah. always never comment because I assume people won't care. Did I look better before because you thought that you would actually pull me in, in real life? Yeah. Because I'm more on your level. Yeah. Now I'm not. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> and does that, does that ever, ever get to you? No. 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 Because I'm doing this for me now. I have, I remember I was quite slim when I first started doing OnlyFans and I put on weight because I saw other girls who were a bit chunkier than me and I would sort of like look at other people and try and think, oh, I'm going to get more fans if I'm a bit more chunky because these girls are getting loads of fans yeah. and literally got more chunky, couldn't get it off. Exactly. <laughs> Hating myself. Peer pressure. Hating bitches. myself for it. Also, like the, um, my boobs, I had to, oh, they wouldn't look as nice if I didn't have a bit of body fat on them. And I, so I was caring about every inch of my body all yeah. the time and trying to cater to someone going, oh, well, I like a bit more chunky and oh, I like it a bit more thin. And I just think I got to a point where I was like, Joe, I'm just, this is what makes me happy. If you don't like it, watch something else. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I think you both shared, which, which I, I found really powerful, you said, now we're both in shape and we're both so much more confident. We feel better doing the thing that you're watching us do anyway. Our sex life has been so much better, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we both enjoyed our, each other's bodies like they're brand new. Yep. And yep. it's just, and, yeah, and, craziness. And for everyone listening, that can happen to you without having to turn the cameras on, by the way. You can just feel... Because like I said, I've had people literally say to me, my body image affects me getting it on. My body image affects me finding someone new. My body image affects me leaving someone. Yeah, feeling horny. Yep, 100%. Like, low low all testosterone. Them thi- yeah, all you know. them things. Both yeah. our sex drives have gone of course, up, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Like through everything that we do in. So if, if there was a some advice you would give people to being their honest and um authentic self what would you say because a lot of people look at this and maybe they don't want to start any fans maybe they do maybe they want a better sex life but they're out of shape you know apart from saying start now for anything film it now get to the gym now what would you say your take comes if your daughter said you know i'm um, I'm feeling down about my body i don't know what career i'm doing what how what would you say to them for your advice how to start i'd say take little steps to start with i think that the smallest changes can be the biggest changes in the long run. And so it's taking those small steps to begin with. Is that right? Yeah, yeah no, no, because what you're describing is the the process, because obviously, you know, you, would, you said you were doing the adult works, you were doing the TikTok before it blew up. You know, you were trying to get in shape before you changed the eight week part. I think most people think it has to happen overnight. Yeah, they, they're, too, ambi- does, like, too, they're, ambitious, yeah, they're too ambitious. Yeah, they're too ambitious. And like, they want to, they want it, and I think that's where my, my frame of mind changed, actually. They want it now. Yeah. And I realised that if I wanted this, I'm not... Two-week diet ain't making... It's not working. And that's... I've done so many diets. Stuck for it for two weeks. Oh, I've not seen anything change. Mm. Like, I'm gonna... I'm, I'm, I quit. And I think it's that consistency and sticking to something, whether it takes two years, whether it takes... For, do you know what I mean? Look at Nadine. Like, it's taken years for... You know, she's... It's got, She's done it in a long process, and that was quick for her. Yeah. And so it does, it takes time. Like, I'm, I, I think I feel like I'm a bit of a bad example because I've lost it quite quick. Yeah. And people see it as they want that quickly. 
But you're still not where you want to be, are you? So no, exactly. I've got. Do you know what I mean, I've got. A, I've, there's loads of things you've I want to change. Goals, yeah. yeah, and that people see the weight loss as that. But I did put like literally my heart and soul. Yeah, but then that, that's, <laughs> that's important. You know, you're saying that you said that by laughing. But most people just and and I get people at week two. Oh, I, I just stop wearing my food. I'm like. <gasps> 14 days and honestly i i i am getting older and more grumpy because i say to people do you understand how how much disrespect you show yourself that that quickly for uh it's like counting your money at the end of a wait a, a shift you yeah. just stopped and you're wondering why you don't know what profit you weighing made. your food is so important but but after 10 days 14 days and i think that is that shows me what you're like in every other part of your life i said this somebody the other day i actually prefer coaching professionals not because they're professional because they take it seriously straight away yeah they know that if i tell them to do something that's what they do yeah i, I literally can't even lick my finger if i'm making the kids a nutella sandwich i won't even lick yeah. the i go and wash my hands but people will say that's too extreme but i say that's just 100 percent. and when people say you can't do it 100 percent, i say you can because people are doing it yeah and it's not too extreme if i know that that's my weakness because if i have a bit of chocolate i I know that that's a very tough for me to get back in the frame of mind. I also, one biscuit for me would be a foul and then I'd go into fuck it mode. Yeah. Because you take your, your fail seriously, yeah. which you should do. Yeah. And I'd go, oh, fuck it. I've fucked it now. I'm just going to eat all the biscuits. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I know, I know in myself and I'm, and I'm sure a lot of women feel like it is that just that little it's bad hmm. to and that's do, what people do in a, in a cycle for years yeah so has it improved your only fans business being in shape because people ask me about they're like well obviously she gets naked for a living they do has it improved the way you feel about yourselves and the way you perform oh 100 percent. like we're making better videos obviously i'm taking more pictures i just want to do it I think before you don't have to I, hide the angles anymore. I'm no, told oh people. People always someone want, someone we else take said my to pictures me so quickly because I'm like I no editing. Yeah, I don't even look at them. Yep. I go that's gonna be good. <laughs> we had one client say she basically said, "I never shoot from behind. I can't not now." I'm like I love and 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 she was like that's one thing people would say or we never see your bum and she's like you can't see my face anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so for people to understand, but if that were you in what you did, that's so. Uh, motivating yeah 100 percent. i want to work and yeah. i didn't want to work before i was just like i can't be bothered yeah i even got to the point where i was like i don't know if i want to do this like i don't know if i want to carry on doing this because it doesn't make me happy but now i am happy and my body is the way it is i'm again it's like a it's like i've started again it's like i'm a new new lease of life and for those who will be wondering you obviously obsessed parents you're always doing something with your kids yeah always football athletics and yeah. things and and that's because monkey see monkey do yeah oh yeah you're definitely. in shape your kids are crazy sports people yeah even my little boy the other day because he has a nutter sandwich for breakfast he's got really bad taste buds there just very sweet but he came in i was doing his hair in the morning and he said oh when when am i going to eat like daddy like when when and i said your taste buds will mature yeah of course yeah. i said at the moment they're not that mature and like that's a that'd be a lot because he's eating i think it was it mints and eggs and he's already like i want to build i want to be like i bought him some weights because he wanted to like yeah, have yeah, little course. weights in his bedroom and he's like working on his run a little bit more and well, just it's funny if you look things. at if you look at china part of USA and Russia that's how their kids are brought up yeah. to be athletes from five, six, seven, eight, eating properly training so in this country like someone wrote on a picture the other day it's only fit shaming only exists in the UK because it's normalised to look at people overweight and out of shape and think that's actually normal Yeah, it's normal to think people should drink alcohol every week and it's not no. but these kind of instances with kids like oh it'd be boring for your kids not to eat cereal not in 90% of the world kids don't eat cereal yeah exactly and yeah he he was like on a six pack like he's he's learning like he's seeing that through us now and mm -hmm. he's he's really he's changing as a, a little boy as well which i think's brilliant I happy think parents that, happy kids yeah exactly well i hope that's been informative because i think a lot of people see the the size of your TikTok and the, and the things you do and then your fitness journey and don't understand where it came from and the fact that you know your regular people parents hardworking, focused with just a different level of desire to everybody else yeah <laughs> so thank you for coming in thanks for having me thanks Jess <laughs>